Aleyküm esselam.
For you can only decree this life in this world because whatever you do, it's only in this short period of life we are living on this earth, nothing else. Another example is Bilal al-Habashi, a slave, a black slave during the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He endured a lot of punishments and torment and disasters from his master. And all the time he would keep saying, Ahad al Ahad, Ahad al Ahad, the one and only, without caring about the pain and suffering he was going through because he believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is so important about this message? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam resisted all the temptations that were offered to him to stop from spreading this message. Like the time the kuffar of Quraysh came to him and they told him, they told actually to, came to his uncle and they told him, what does your nephew really want? I mean, what is he really up to? If he wants fame and he wants prestige in this life, we're gonna make him the most famous one of us. We will not do anything unless he approves of it. If he's looking for money, we will make him the wealthiest, wealthiest one amongst us. If he wants to be king, we will even make him his king. Whatever he wants, just let him stop the message. So his uncle came and gave him basically what they want, their offer. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his uncle, I swear by Allah, my uncle, if they are to put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand for me to move away and step away from this message that I meant to deliver, I will not do it except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order me something else from what I'm doing right now or I die for it. So basically I'm holding still to this message until the day I die. I will be back inshallah to addressing the importance of la ilaha illallah shortly. But first I want to basically dissect that statement and really understand what it means to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you an example. Um, you as a person, male or female, you get married, you have a, have a family, you have a house. You set a set of rules and regulations and laws in your house because of your hopefully firm belief and correct belief that what you're doing is correct to this family because you want what's best for that family. So basically you set the laws and regulations and you enforce them by rewarding sometimes and punishing sometimes the kids because you want them to be the best they can be for their own benefits. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَىٰ And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a great example. How about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah, the one and only, the one that has no one like him in existence. He created this vast universe, the one where everything exists in. This universe that we just started to understand this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we just started to understand the secrets of this universe. And he also created earth, the earth that we actually live in right now. And he created everything else, living thing, including us. So it only makes sense that the one who created us, down to our very smallest, tiny, microscopic cell, knows exactly how our bodies and mind tick and how they work and what's best for them. And since he owns us and everything in this universe, he is basically free to do whatever he wants with what he owns and set any laws and rules and regulations in his own kingdom. But we, because our, of our firm belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knowing, all-just, and all-merciful, it's impossible for someone with such great qualities to want something that's harmful for us. Harmful for us. Actually, all his laws and regulations must be beneficial to us and it's for our own benefit, basically. And to ensure his obedience, to ensure the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created hell and heaven as means of reward, reward and punishment for us when we get judged by our actions on the day of judgment. By declaring the first part of the shahada, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, which is to bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord, is the only God, we are accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously as our God and we have joined millions and millions of people who belong to this great religion of Al-Islam. You basically have submitted to giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala full control over your life by living your life the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to live it because now you became a Muslim. And what a better way, what a better way to really live 
the way he wants us to live our life, but to first of all understand the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow on the seerah of Rasulullah the best teacher that ever existed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us. And by accepting that second, the teacher who basically committed to it, and we are declaring the second part of the shahada, which is Ashhad in Muhammad Rasulullah, and I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is the Prophet of Allah. So we agreed for Allah to, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we agreed to the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us. Allah has basically extended to us a business transaction. He is basically offering us a business transaction with complete terms and details and conditions. The do's and don'ts, the benefits and the, uh, the penalties of it all spelled out in a very clear contract that can basically have, cannot be altered or disputed and has no, nothing hidden in Everything is very simple and very clear. That contract is, um, and also he gave us references in that contract to go back to and see how did the people do, the people before us who were also proposed with that contract, how did they do when they did and do not accept that contract. And the contract obviously we're talking about is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala itself. The book spells everything that you have basically between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala wa ta'ala fi kitabi kaif surat al-saf. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim tu'minuna billahi wa rasoolihi wa tujahiduna fi sabihi lillahi bi amwalikum wa anfusikum thalika khayrul lakum in تعلمون يغفر لكم ذنوبكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ومساكن طيبة ومساكن طيبة في جنات عد ذلك الفوز العظيم وأخرى تحبونها نصر من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa taala started addressing the entrepreneurs. He said. All oh, you who believe, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Aman. Because Allah SWT knows that these are the people that are going to jump, the first people to jump in this opportunity that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to offer them right now. And after he got their attention, he basically sent the, gave them the proposal. He said, Shall I guide you to a trade that will save you from a painful torment? So this was the contract, this was the proposal from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Should I guide you to the trade that will save you from a painful, painful torment? After he made the proposal, he followed his proposal by his business plan. What is the plan? What do we need to do in that proposal to, so we can have business together? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you believe in Allah and his messenger and that you strive hard and fight in the cause of Allah with your wealth and your lives. So this is the business plan that you are to help with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because, because he knows that you trust him, he wanted to assure that his plan is, absolute, is the absolute best plan you can have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then that will be better for you if you only know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the proposal, gave you the plan, is telling you at the end, this is the best proposal, the best business deal you can ever get into, only if you know. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. So now being this a business transaction, there must be profit behind it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. So he discusses what is in it for them on the long run. What are they profiting from? He said, if you do so, he will forgive, he will forgive you your sins and admit you into gardens under which rivers flow and pleasant dwellings in Eden Paradise. So this is basically the long-term benefit for you to go and do business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to show uh, that this is the best return on their investment, he said, that is indeed the greatest success. Meaning nothing will give you return to your investment better than this offer right here. And just in case if any of them were actually looking for uh, incentives right now to see the benefits of their uh, transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them extra bonus. He said, and also, he will give you 
and also another blessing which is love help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a new victory these are the things that you will basically basically cultivate in this life and the other ones are for the hereafter on the long run and because he knows that this is a golden opportunity for those entrepreneurs and these disbelievers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at the end, and give glad tidings to those believers.